Scientists have tried to find evidence for the ability to see the future for over a century. What science can ask is, is this possible in principle? Not that particular story that I heard, but is it possible even in principle for this to occur? So that's where all the experiments come from. In the past, simple experiments were conducted to see if some people could predict the future. One way was to uh, do something like, uh, here is a die and I'm going to toss it and you tell me beforehand which face will land face up. And that could be done very easily and was done thousands of times. Another approach is to take a deck of cards with five symbols on them and say, okay, we'll shuffle it and now we don't know what the answer will be, but you tell me what will happen when I shuffle it again and give you a card. So nobody knows what the answer is yet because it doesn't exist. Raiden took a different approach and decided to look for unconscious precognition. Physiological data showing that our bodies react to an event in the moments before it happens. Dean Radin actually realized that a lot of uh, our future experiences are, are first of all felt. Butterflies in the stomach or hair standing up on your neck. And so he developed a line of research really called presentiment that tries to look at this experimentally. Presentiment means pre-feeling. The idea of a, of a feeling come up, coming upon you about the future. The, the technique then involves looking at sequences of pictures that are randomly selected in the future, and sometimes they're very emotional and sometimes they're calm. And the hypothesis is very simple then. You simply look before the picture is selected to see whether physiology is calm or emotional in accordance with what the future will bring. Okay, Judy, what we're going to be asking you to do is just sit quietly. You'll be listening to some noises, okay? We're interested in whether people can anticipate these noises. In our experiment, we're using loud sounds as the kind of shocking future event. At the same time, we're monitoring skin conductance, which is an indicator of emotional arousal. We're interested in what happens several seconds before the computer even decides to give them a shock. You know, does their skin conductance anticipate a, um, a future event in there, you know, that's going to be slightly unpleasant for them. In the case of presentiment experiments, we're dealing with a real effect. There really is information coming from the future. The run is now complete. An experiment will be with you shortly. Okay, Judy, here are your results. Your body is showing a peak here, which shows that before the sound had randomly been produced, your body was anticipating that, so there's an increase in physiological arousal here. If people's emotional system, as evidenced by the skin conductance or, or by other means, shows that one can reliably anticipate future events, well then, we may be getting a handle on the mechanisms by which precognitive information, information from the future, changes human behavior. We all express this all the time, I believe. And it does provide, in a, in a small context, limited in space and time, the ability to, to see beyond our senses. And that's where things like gut feelings come in for the next 10 seconds or 15 seconds. It's still a big leap from knowing something will happen moments before it does and knowing days or weeks beforehand. But Broughton sees enormous possibilities in precognition research. My goal is to see if we can develop some sort of uh, test technique, a screening device that might identify intuitively advantaged people, people who may sense their feelings about future events uh, more readily than other people. And then we could start bringing them into business situations and, and other situations where their premonitions may be very useful. It's probably a very a small minority of the population, one in a thousand or one in ten thousand that have a talent in that direction. Many of them may never develop that talent. or. They do develop it and they become extremely successful people in business or in the arts or in some other realm. There are probably people watching the program right now who know very well th that they use these skills and they're very successful at whatever it is they wish to do and they also don't want anybody to know about it. I, I know that if I had those skills, I wouldn't want anybody to know about it. But using precognition or your dreams to win the lottery doesn't seem practical. It's extremely unlikely even the best psychics on the planet, Joe and others, are going to sit down with their lottery ticket and use their psychic ability to fill it out and win. It just won't happen with our current understanding. It's like trying to listen to a symphony from your CD, except you're playing it through two tin cans and a string. 
you, you will lose all the information because the bandwidth, how much information you can get across the string is very, very limited. If we really knew anything about precognition, why don't we always win the lottery? I mean, I think evolution isn't that silly. If this is an evolutionarily determined ability, it's going to be for real survival of factors, not simply making money. I mean, that's, making money is late in evolutionary history. Being happy isn't. <laughs>